So Richard Dunn here, uh, live in the Atlanta Voice Studios with the brothers from Melon Money. I'm here with uh, Carter and George. How you guys doing today? Spectacular, man. Thank you for having us. Man, sir. man, appreciate appreciate you guys for coming, and more importantly, appreciate you guys for what you're doing um, in in the community and, and how you're contributing to the culture, man. Um, you guys have a unique story, um, in my opinion. I've been doing my homework. But can can we get the abbreviated version of how you guys met? Because I think that that's uh, that's just that's the dopest part to me. With two brothers from two different markets and, and two different gangs, and just you know, like a lot of time, black men will we'll see each other on the street yeah. and won't even speak. Yeah, won't, <laughs> right? won't, won't even give a head, a head <laughs> right, nod. Right, yeah. right, right, right. We yeah. barely do that, man. So, so what was what triggered you guys just to say what's up and and yeah. and, and kind of get to going where we are today? Yeah, so we actually uh, met at a, a financial conference in 2019. And, uh, you know, uh, there's not a lot of us in, in certain spaces. And so, you know, as we were walking to lunch, I was walking, I saw a brother, you know what I'm saying, it looked like he was kind of cool, you know what I'm a saying? Little a little, little, little swag. A little swag. A little bit. Not as much as me, but had some, you know. And, uh, you know, and gave him that head. And I said, what's up, brother? And then we just kept we're walking over to lunch. He was sharing me what he was doing in business. I was sharing him with him what I was doing in business. And we saw that there was a lot of similarities and parallels at the time. He was dual CPA and financial advisor, um, and so uh, we were doing a lot of the same things. He decided to go all in on the accountant side, and so just for two years, uh, we just decided to meet every other Monday, just like you know, just sharing ideas. Where entrepreneurship is lonely, so we uh, you know did that for two years, no strings attached, and then we're just like, well, obviously this this is working, all right? There's there's a there's something here, there's synergy here. And then we went another two years and said, hey, look, well, you know, you have a successful business. I got a successful business. Let's build something that's bigger than us, um, that's meaningful. And we started our media platform first, right? We started the podcast. We said, rain, sleet, or snow every Wednesday. We're not going to miss the episode. When I tell you that, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons that we could have missed the episode. Um, you know, we didn't. And that was another two years. Um, and at that point, it was like, okay, like you can go four years with somebody, connect, talking to them every day, sometimes multiple times a day, mutually aligned, no ego involved. Um, and not pressed for the money and more more focused on the impact. There's there's got to be more here. So we decided to go all in at that point. Um, with him having a CPA background, me having a wealth management background. So let's combine the best of both worlds. You help uh, save people money on taxes. I can help them reinvest that money and help them build wealth faster. And so we decided to do that, and we got the confirmation that it was the right move because when we went all in on that, things just started to 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 take off exponentially, and the impact has been crazy. Ever That's amazing. That's amazing, man. So. What was the domino effect, or what was the impact um, for you guys personally, and then and then how was the impact for the business? Like, what happened because you connect? Yeah, so um, I wish I told you it was all you know rainbows and sunshines at the beginning, but we had we had respective teams when we came together, right? So we had to merge two companies with different company cultures together, and that was a. Uh, um, something that we never done before, and it was a little bit more challenging than um, we we anticipated. But like when anything worth having, they have to work a little bit harder for it, right? And I think that uh, now, like I tell them all the time, I've never been more confident as an entrepreneur because our team and our and our company, we actually are building an enterprise. Which I didn't get an entrepreneurship for that. I got an entrepreneurship because I wanted to like help people make money and have my own time. But now we're building a, a actual enterprise, which I think is dope. Um, so from a, a personal level, it was it was bigger than anything I saw myself doing. And from a business level, like we have 20 plus employees now, right? And I never saw this happening. And our impact on our clients has been astronomical. I think last year alone, we helped our clients increase their net worth by over $60 million in a year, which is crazy, right? To even, to even say out loud. So it's been... Um, Bigger than anything, anything I ever could have expected, and the scary part is, is we're just getting started. Yeah, that's dope, man. I want to I want to kind of go all the way back for a second, man, um, because we we know where you are, and we, and we got a good gauge of where you guys are headed. Yeah. But what what made you get into the business of money in the first place? Yeah. Like, what's the story before the conference, man? Like, yeah. what what got you into what you were doing? What's your background, a little bit? Because I don't yeah. know if people really understand. No, that. that's 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 a good question. I don't get a chance to talk about that often. So. Um, I would say my kind of origin story for wanting to get into money. I remember when the first PlayStation came out, uh, I wanted it, right? Who, what kid didn't? And I asked my mom at the beginning of the year, I was like, yo, I got to have the PlayStation. She never said no, right? And when you're being, you're so young, you don't know if your parents got money. You know, like, like you don't, you might know that some friends have a little bit more than you, but you don't really know what's happening behind the scenes. So she never said no. And uh, Christmas rolled around. I saw a box, at least to me, it looked like it was a rectangle. I was like, man, that got to be it. It's got to be it. So I get excited on Christmas, open the box. 
and it's uh, tube socks. You know, kind of the little red lines at the top. Yeah. We had a whole box of them too. Had like twelve pair, and um, I was uh, disappointed nonetheless, right? But in that moment, it sparked something. Y'all like, why didn't I get the PlayStation? I was like, maybe in life, if you really want something, you gotta go get it yourself. So that started sparked me wanting to cut grass and pick up odd jobs as a you know in elementary school, and you know save my money so that I could have the resources uh, whenever I wanted something, right? And from there, uh, I think I remember like my family members at the time, aunts, uncles, like asking to even borrow money. I'm in elementary school and I didn't know nothing about the term interest, but logically it was just like, well, if I loan you this 20 or $40, you should probably give me uh, back more than I gave you. Right. So that's kind of where my, my journey started is just understanding that like, if you want something in life, you got to go get it. You got to manage your money. Of course, I didn't know those terms in that sense at that time. Um, and then just growing up and then seeing my mom starting to understand like, okay, we didn't come for money. I only wanted to learn money to be that resource for my family, not because I wanted to be a financial advisor, but because I wanted to understand it enough to be able to educate my family so we wouldn't have this issue anymore. No, no. What about you? Um, yeah, so my story is pretty similar. So I grew up on the south side of Chicago. It was like nine of us in a three-bedroom home. And most people like understand that's poverty. I didn't know it was poverty. I thought we just had house parties with my cousins all the time. So we was kicking it, you know. Um, but it got hard when my, um, at the age of 14, my mother passed away. And at the age of 16, my father passed away. So at the age of 17, we were living out of a hotel, right? And I remember, like, so searching the hotel parking lot for change so I can have lunch money for school, right? And, I, and it's just, like, little moments in your life, you just, like, they define you because you can complain or you can take it in, internally and say, this is never going to happen to me again. By all, I'm never doing this again. So I said, I'm going to do whatever it takes for me not to never have money again. Because I watched, like, my parents couldn't do nothing about it. My parents are gone. My auntie was raising us. So um, when I was in high school, so I was in high school at the time, my guidance counselor asked me, what do I want to be? And, and I, I said, I want to never be unemployed. Because I'm watching my family members, but you know, lose their jobs and things like that. So I literally Googled what job has the lowest unemployment rate. Mm. CPA was number one. So I said, that's what I'm gonna do. Because wow. I love numbers, I want to learn about money, and I will always have a job. And I wish I had, I wish I could say I followed my passion. No, mm. I followed the money. Yeah. I followed the security, I followed the stability, and it just so happened I turned being a CPA into something way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. But that's that's it. Man, that's cool, man. That's cool. I, I, I got uh, respect for both stories. Because um, largely, like, in our community, financial literacy is, like, it's taboo. It's, it's, yeah. it's, you know, home economics is not about money when you take it in school. Yeah. And, and and people that look like us, our parents don't talk about money at all at the kitchen. That's table. crazy. I never thought about that. They call it home economics. <laughs> you don't learn nothing about money in the kitchen making. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Learn how yeah. to cook and wash dishes, right? But, when, but the, you're black, you're doing it at home anyway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the reason why black culture doesn't like talking about money at the dinner table is because of shame and embarrassment. It's not because it's like we don't want to talk about it because we talk about anything else that we're competent in. It's if you ask your mom, what is, you know, how do I invest in the stock market? She doesn't know the answer. She might not know the answer. And therefore, it's shame and embarrassment there. So we just say, don't bring it up. Yeah. Right. But, you know, so I think that if the parental figures are educated on money, on investing, on taxes, on business, they have no problem talking about it. It's that they didn't have the education. It's not their fault. They, they did the best with who they were and what they had. Absolutely. But we have the opportunity now to change that for our families by bringing it up at the dinner table because it's something we're competent. Yeah, I, I'll share this story with you guys, right, since we are sharing, right? Now, my mom is brilliant. She, she's a retired PhD principal. Mm -hmm. But the first time I asked her what she paid for a car, she, bought, she came home with a Renault Alliance. It wasn't like we was balling or nothing mm -hmm. growing up. But I asked her, well, what did it cost to get that car? And her answer was, it's none of your business, mm -hmm. right? So that's the story, uh, that's why I'm at. Like, that's my, my point of reference when it comes to financial literacy at home. The answer should have been to notice this, the insurance is that, and I keep this to the side because it, it breaks down, we're going to be back on MARTA, right? Mm -hmm. that's the, that is like part of just, just basic, how do you manage a checkbook, or how do, you, how, do you, how do you float, and why do you, you know, why do you shop this way, things like that, so like how do we make ends meet? That conversation hadn't even happened a lot in black camp in black families to me, man. So, I just want to commend you guys for what you're doing and 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 and, and all the good work and the impact because the Dumbo effect of what you're doing is amazing. Yeah, and I, and I think that like it's it's up to us to instill it early, right? And make it fun. So uh, I took my nieces shopping last weekend, 
And instead of just saying, go buy something, I said, y'all got a $500 budget each. After every store, you're going to get your receipt, and then you'll let me know how much you have left. So I'm, they're going shopping, but I'm teaching them how to budget with their shopping expenses. And they came to me with the receipts. They were doing math and stuff. Just like little things like that. They it made a shopping experience fun, but I was teaching them at the same time. So if we could just find ways to creatively and um, entertain our kids with money and finances, they'll like they'll gravitate towards it, right? But I think that we just it's just on us to take a little bit of time and do that. Yeah, that's cool, man. And, and it's funny you say that because to me, you guys are making accounting and selling insurance for lack of better words, right? Like you're making it cool, right? You, you know what I mean? Those those in in some spaces, that's not the the exciting job or the exciting career that that a lot of people that look like us go after, man. So um, kudos to you guys for doing that. So you guys are in Atlanta, mm -hmm. here for a conference. Um, first of all, why Atlanta? Why, why would you pick Atlanta to do this event? Yeah, again, it's one of those things where I wish we had like a, a really great answer, but our demographic for our client base um, and the people that we're connected to a lot of, a, we have a strong base here is, is, is the long or short of it. Um, we know that Atlanta's a you know black mecca. It's a great place to do these types of events. I know InvestFest they have their event here as well. Um, but yeah, we selected Atlanta and we have an event coming up uh, this weekend called Wealth Weekend. And uh, the first day is education, right? Because like again, people need the information. We want to make sure that they can learn before they do anything else. Um, the second day is a celebration, right? Where uh, some of our clients we're actually celebrating their journey, their net worth milestones that they've achieved, whether they have a $100,000 net worth, half a million or a million to show people like, oh, this actually works and it's possible, right? Because if we talk about what we've done, like you're supposed to, you've been in a CPA for 10 years, you've been a financial advisor and wealth manager for 12 years. Sure, you guys got to figure it out, but showing our clients and showcasing them really makes it tangible for people. Um, and then we have just another event after that just to, you know, have some more fun. It's a sneaker ball after party. Yeah. Dope, dope, man. So those um, is, uh, tickets still available? How do I get involved? Things of that sort, man. What, what's the... Yeah, so tickets are still available uh, for until they sell out. We're close to that sellout point. But if you go to melaninmoney.com, M E. M E L A N I N yeah. money.com. I get paid to do numbers, not to spell, spell words. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, melaninmoney.com. We still have a few tickets available. And yes, yeah, this is about getting in the room. Like, like George said, education on day one, celebration on day two. Because, you know, we all get celebrated for like buying a new car or mm -hmm. getting the Louis Bell. But like, why are we celebrating for those things, but we're not celebrating for investing in the stock market, for starting your Roth IRA, for hitting 100K in net worth, half a million? So we actually going to be celebrating our clients and other people on them investing and keeping the money that they earn and building up the generational wealth for themselves, but not to mention their families as well. That's dope, man. Any other things going on within your organization now that you would like to talk about expansion or yeah. your, your clients nationally? How, how are you... Moving there, I just wanted to be a client, let alone you know be a student. But yeah. how do I get down with you guys in general? Yeah, um, so if you visit that same website, uh, melaninmoney.com, uh, there's a uh, join join the club tab, work with us tab, um, and, and it kind of gives you an overview to learn a little bit more about like what we do and how we serve our clients, right? And just from a sheer education standpoint, uh, like even, as I mentioned, we have a podcast that airs every Wednesday, uh, YouTube channel, Melanin Money, same name, and then on social media, we post a lot of great content as well. So I say tapping in with those platforms to get a better understanding of who we are and what we do. Um, if you're interested in learning more about working with us, you can just visit melaninmoney.com, uh, go to the Join Us tab, and then uh, learn more. Uh, something else that you mentioned earlier about uh, you know uh, people being embarrassed, right? Mm -hmm. So say I want to get rich and I feel like I'm not rich enough to talk to rich guys, right? Like, mm -hmm. what do I need to have together in order for me to be a real client? What can you work with? Yeah, um, uh, and George might be better at answering this than, than me, um, but we we work with people that we know we can help and get immediate results for, right? So some people haven't reached a point in their financial journey where working with us makes sense for the price point that it's going to cost to hire us, right? Because I tell people all the time, you know, experts are expensive, but amateurs will cost you a fortune, right? So you want to work with the right people, but we, we always want to work with clients that are ready and that we can get the results for. So that usually is about what? Uh, what? On which level? The lowest level? Oh, yeah, lowest level. Get yeah. like 10,000 10, annually. Yeah, 10,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 10, annually, but um, they, they need to make at least six figures for us to be able to help them save on taxes and actually start investing. If you're not making six figures yet, 
respectfully, you don't have an investing or tax problem. You have a money problem. You need to figure out how to make more money first. And then once you cross that six figure mark, then it's like, okay, let's help minimize your tax bill and then let's help uh, increase your investment. So we, just, we have like a minimum income requirement for the people to be able to like we're higher rest of their advisors. Here's the great news though, right? Mm -hmm. we, we see we do see the gap in the marketplace. We do see that there's a bunch of gurus online and everybody claims to be an expert. So we said, well, we, we could start another low ticket subscription and membership and try to help a bunch of people that way. Or we could democratize information altogether by, by not only giving out free information through our podcast and stuff like that, but we have, we are formally launching a free financial social network uh, that are, that's in the works now, right? Sure. So it's currently actually a paid subscription. We're gonna cut off the revenue stream. Nobody that's currently a member of that level will have to pay us anymore. And then we're gonna make it free to the public because we don't, we know that even, you know, we can help people at a certain threshold, but we still know other people need to be educated so they can get to that point, yeah. right? So instead of just saying, hey, we, we can't help you, uh, we're dedicating a whole line of business just to serve people for free. Uh, we're taking on the brunt of that cost wise, but we just know that there's so many people that need the right guidance and the right information. And so we're gonna roll that out. And it's no, no different than being able to log into Instagram and consume content. We're gonna have a whole financial social platform of courses, classes, uh, modules, resources that people can access so they can work themselves up to that point where it's like, now nah, I'm ready. Let's get it. That's dope. Yes. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, bro.